this layered architecture is definitely going to address some problems which we might have if we do not uh, use the concept of layers for arranging and organizing the stuff so we may know that the source code changes are rippling that means change at one place in the code has effects at the other places too so if we use the concept of layers we are going to reduce this rippling effect and the changes will be much easier as compared to without using the layers then application logic is intertwined with the user interface and let's suppose you want to calculate the discount for a particular customer now that discount calculation code will be actually intertwined with the user interface so to avoid that we actually can use the concept of layers which will separate the application logic uh, application logic code from the uh, the from the user interface similarly there is a coupling and uh, uh, intervention of the technical services or business logic with the more application specific logic so we are actually mixing the logic we might not uh, need to write two different functions at the same place or two different classes at the same place uh, but uh, we sometimes do that and it creates problems later on so to avoid that uh, we can use the concept of layers we can use the layered architecture and then there is high coupling across different areas of concern so whenever there is very much highly coupled classes or packages or functions then it will always be very difficult to uh, to to basically maintain that code later on probably and to extend that will be a nightmare so to reduce that we can also use the concept of layers so these are some problems which are actually solved when we are designing with the layers so of course the benefits of using the layers will definitely include the problem solution that we just discussed but in addition to that it it reduces the coupling and dependencies so by reducing the coupling and dependencies definitely it is going to help us uh, resolve the problems that we just discussed whereas it it also reduces the complexity by uh, encapsulating and decomposing the stuff so the layers encapsulate a lot of stuff and we see our system in a very simple manner that means if there are 100 packages for example and we are using the concept of packages inside the packages so probably after the final organization these 100 packages could be seen uh, in the form of just 20 packages so that definitely reduces the complexity and the usage of layers also allow us uh, replacing with the new implementation so for example you are using a particular layer and you can completely replace that layer with a new layer one other benefit is the reusability so if we are using a layer which is at the lower level it can definitely be reused some layers primarily the domain and technical services they can also be distributed so you can place uh, a part of those layers at uh, one geographical or physical location and the other part at some other place uh, the development team is also aided because of the logical segmentation so when you are logically distributing then it will be very easy for your development team to work forward this diagram actually shows some common layers in an information system logical architecture so if you are developing or working in an information system like library information system a restaurant inf management system uh, a learning management system uh, you will actually be seeing these layers in action but one thing that you must notice with this diagram is that as you move downwards you will see uh, the dependency in action so that means the ui layer is normally dependent upon the application layer the application layer is dependent upon the domain layer and the domain layer is usually dependent upon the business infrastructure layer and business infrastructure layer is using the technical services where technical services are definitely based upon the foundation layer 
and the foundation layers are actually the core services base services or low level technical services infrastructure whereas the width actually in employs the range so that means uh, the range of applicability which means the foundation services will be applicable in more scenarios whereas if we move towards the top this ui layer will be applicable in the least scenarios so for one application this ui layer will be different whereas for the very other and next application this ui layer will be different in contrast to that this foundation layer will be used across many different applications and it will not change which means for example if you are working with a library management system or we are working with with an lms or maybe we are working with the hospital management system many of the services of the, the base services will be same similarly many technical services will not change but for the ui it will change very differently even if we move from a library management system to a learning management system so that's why it says that as you move upwards the layers are more application specific whereas if you go downwards these layers are uh, more dependent upon each other and they become less application specific so for the layered approach one of the traditional pattern that we might follow is called the mvc which you might have heard of already uh, but this pattern is usually used for uh, working with the layered architecture whenever we are developing our system in forms of layers and the typical name for the layers may include model view and controller whereas the the model may include the domain model the data model and some other logical models the view includes the user interfaces and the controller has the execution control so here if we look at the layers and their partitions we can very clearly see that when we create vertical layers we are actually adding the number of layers in vertical direction and in each layer when we are adding more packages that means we are increasing the horizontal direction so the architecture can be split into more layers and each layer can be split into partitions so in in the horizontal direction we have the partitions whereas in the vertical direction we are having the number of layers this diagram here represents the relationship between the domain model and the design model and it tells that the concept for example the concept of payment in the domain model is related to the concept in fact the class in the design model the domain model simply has the payment as a concept whereas the design model has payment as a complete class and that's very obvious that all the concepts in the domain model they inspire the objects and the names in the design model so if we have a concept of sale in the domain model then we are going to have the class called sale in our design model so this actually reduces the representational gap and uh, it helps us very easily understand the name of the class so that uh, we can map it to the the concept in our domain if you observe closely in the system sequence diagram when we used to write the operations these system operations which were handled by the system here in the system sequence diagram actually represent the operation calls on the application or domain layer from the ui layer so you can see very closely that when cashier calls these operations it is actually calling these operations on the ui and this ui is further passing these operations to the domain layer and there is a concept in the domain which is having the functionality defined in it now to work with the model and view architecture in its true spirit we must make sure that we at least follow these principles the first principle says that you should not connect or couple the non ui objects directly to the ui objects 
For example, if you're working in Java and using the Swing JFrame, you should not let your domain objects or your classes to be directly coupled with your frame. Additionally, you should not put the application logic, for example, a text calculation logic where you are actually calculating the, the total tax on a sale probably. Uh, you should not put that text calculation code in the UI object methods, which means you should not write this code in a function on a mouse click. For example, when you click on a mouse and a function of a window is called, you should not write this text calculation code in the function behind your user interface. The better approach will be that you create a separate class and call the function of that class whenever a mouse button is clicked. In that way, you can separate your model and view very easily. For further understanding, you can read chapter number 12 and 13 from Applying Human and Patterns. Good luck!